So, so welcome. Um, my name's Darren White. Uh, I'm from a company called Web Ninja. Um, as you can see, we do a couple of products, and, and what I wanted to talk about today was uh, maybe some entry-level stuff in terms of how you go about um, maybe getting an e-commerce store established. Um, talk about some of the stuff that we do as a specialty. Uh, give you a couple of examples of some sites that we've done as well, and, um, and obviously happy to answer some questions and all that sort of stuff uh, uh, when we're finished that you might be interested in knowing a little bit more information about. So, uh, a little bit about us and what we do. Um, web stores is pr primarily what we're talking about today, but we also do, um, do two other products, uh, which are a CRM, a customer relationship management product, and also a, uh, a Facebook product. So we actually have a web store embedded in Facebook. I'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that too. Um, we're an Australian, New Zealand-owned business. Uh, we're based on the Gold Coast. There's, a, there's 12 of our team. Uh, our background, if you like, is in the accounting space. Uh, we have owned and, and created a few accounting packages along the way and sold a few, uh, and that's sort of at our space. And therefore, our, if you like, our core competency is really around the integration side of things, so, so really talking to your, your accounting application and making things a little bit more efficient for you in your business. Uh, we have a, a wide range of customers, and we, and we sit across Australia and New Zealand in terms of where those customers are. Um, customers sit. So uh, very experienced uh, from our point of view in terms of the, the way we do stuff around websites and integration um, and across, like I said, um, a couple of countries there as well. That's what we look like. That's the ninjas, um, a number of different ones uh, up in, in the Gold Coast, like I said, uh, all involved in all sort of aspects of the business, primarily around obviously project management, putting sites in, um, you know, putting sites together, supporting customers and obviously in the sales process as well. So I want to work through just quickly um, what I sort of call the mechanics of putting a site together. So in other words, um, starting a site off, what are the things you need to think about, um, uh, and, and not go into too much detail, but give you some ideas around it at least. Um, has anyone here got a current e-commerce store? No? No? Charles? <laughs> some clients do, yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. Um, I'll just run through, through a couple of points and just have a bit of a general discussion about it, and um, hopefully just prompt you, you know, with some ideas to think about the number one thing, obviously, is you need to decide what sort of, what sort of products you, you're going to sell. What are you going to sell online? Um, and it might be obvious because your company might be in a certain industry, um, but there's a subset of that, I think, that people kind of need to think about sometimes as well. Some of that subset is really the audience. You know, your business might be a wholesaler. You might be a, an importer and a wholesaler out to a, a wider channel, but there might be an opportunity to open up and, and create um, a retail store. Um, because these days margins are typically thin, um, your channel might be a little bit hard to deal with and it might be an easier um, opportunity there for you to create a, a retail uh, channel. Um, so or it could be the other way around, you could be a retailer and look to, to bring in a new product and, and also wholesale it as well. So there's an audience option there in terms of um, what your business will sell. The other thing too is it may not be a current product that you sell or it could be a subset of the products that you sell. Um, oftentimes we have customers that come along to us who have thousands of products, tens of thousands of products, but not typically all of those uh, lent themselves to the web very easily um, or, or are typically sort of higher experience type products that you can't necessarily translate to, to web sales. So it's really maybe having a look at a subset of the products that you sell or what is going to lend itself to selling on, on the web um, nice and easy. Sometimes it's based on price. Um, there's, a, there's obviously a... Cons uh, you know, conception out there in the, in the wider world or a perception out there in the wider world that, you know, when you buy online, you should be cheaper. Um, just ask um, Harvey Norman. He has trouble selling online at the moment because, uh, you know, he's got franchises that have paid a million dollars for a franchise and he can't undercut them. So, um, so you've got to think about that sort of aspect as well. Number two, obviously, when you want to sell online, you need an online store to do that. Um, the typical shopping cart type scenario is, 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 is what everyone is used to in terms of uh, you know, how you shop online. But they come in different formats. Um, there's different functionality involved as well. So depending on whether or not it is a retail focus or it's a wholesale focus, there's a number of different features and functionalities that you need to think about um, in terms of what your customers see and how they, uh, how they go through to buy your product or find your product within the site itself. Um, you know, there's things like wish lists, which is a real retail focus type uh, functionality. Um, there's related products, so suggested products once, you know, this customer also bought this particular product, that sort of stuff that you can upsell on. Uh, videos are a great tool these days for, for presenting products um, and really good from a, a search engine optimization point of view as well. I think, Charles, you probably use that a little, that strategy there. Yes. Uh, 
and uh, reviews, all that sort of stuff is nice because it keeps your site fresh, um, keeps it rated high. Uh, and when it comes to B2B and things like that, you've got the custom order and op ordering options. So making it maybe easier for your customers to buy versus this traditional shopping cart type process, you might have a process where a customer's, you know, a returning customer is presented with a, a, a certain list of products that it's nice and easy to go one of those, five of those, seven of those, thanks and order versus the traditional slower approach. So you've got to think about your audience and what's going to be easier for them to buy. Um, and again, obviously, it depends on, on the, type of, uh, the type of channel you're going for, whether it's a retail or a B2B type situation. Um, next, obviously, the most, well, the second most important thing, I suppose, is the design and the look and feel of the site itself. Um, a lot of people that, that we do, do, do business with, uh, you know, have a designer that they prefer, have, a, have someone who's used their or done their branding for a number of years and does have some web design skills and therefore, you know, provides us with a design and we code that up. Um, or, you know, you can use a template. There's a lot of templates out there in the wider world that you can get quite um, quickly and easily um, based on something that you like the look of. So, so there's a couple of different options in terms of that way that design um, comes together. Uh, you can obviously you know, look at your industry peers, peers as well and see what they do and how they present their products and, and maybe come to a bit of a, a meshing of, uh, of a, a number of different things to come up with something that you like. But design is a, is a very important aspect. Then it comes down to the, the other side of the mechanics around the site itself. You know, what are your payment options? What are your customers going to, uh, uh, going to accept or, or what do you want to accept in terms of the payment options? So you know, PayPal is a natural choice these days if you're in the retail space. PayPal um, adds a lot of credibility to your site as well because they have some nice guarantees around the payment side of things. Um, secure pay, all those sort of online gateways allow you to do business quicker and obviously get your money quicker. Um, and authorise that you know, without necessarily taking or having the risk of taking credit card details. Um, when it comes to B2B, maybe it's a different situation. Maybe you're offering, you're offering obviously, you know, maybe internally or, or in the traditional methods, you're offering accounts. So you need to recognise those maybe when the person hits the website, recognises they're an account holder and you know, pushes that through to their account, say, in, their, in, their accounting in your accounting application, I should say. Um, blogs and news feeds, again, Charles will probably agree with this, that sort of stuff keeps your site fresh, um, keeps, your, keeps, keeps the people informed um, when they come to your site, but it also obviously helps you with, the, with your searching um, criteria as well. So the more sort of content that you have that's fresh and all that sort of thing around your website, um, the more need it is or the more reason that, that Google's spiders and all those things will come back to your site, look at your site, um, and hopefully get you a bit, a bit, bit of higher in terms of page relevance, searching and things like that. So all those things are obviously ongoing maintenance around your site, but it's, um, there's a reason for it. It's not just about people reading your blog, um, it's also about Google finding your blog and doing something with it as well. Oops. Um, I guess the most important thing that we sort of stress for people is, is, is make it easy as you can for your, for your customers to buy your product. So don't put hurdles in the way, um, and that's a little bit of what they call site optimization. Um, or, or conversion rate optimization. So you can, you can get people to your site, and, and someone like Charles's firm here, he gets people to, to sites. Um, you know, they, they optimize and do search engine optimization and get people to the sites. But when you get them there, you, got to do, you want to convert them. You want them to buy. Um, and that's, like I said, is maybe avoiding some of those hurdles that, that people have, like pop-ups and, and hard navigation and, and, and you know, search, searches that don't work and, and, and pages that don't link properly and things like that. It's about optimizing those up. So it is easy for me to come to a site, find my product, find the information on it, and be able to buy it really quickly. Um, advertise your store. Okay? So it's great. You've, you've built this website. You've got a fantastic design. You've got an online store that's got the payment mechanisms. It's got the news feeds. It's got all that sort of stuff. But you've got to get people there. Um, and this is where, obviously, search engine optimization and some of those things that you can do, some of the strategies around that um, take place to get people to your site. SEO. So SEO, and, and there's uh, Charles, I keep referring to Charles because this is what he does, but, um, and those are people who, who want SEO in, in Perth, have a, look, have a chat to Charles. But um, SEO itself is, is really, like I said, is, is optimising and getting your page, getting your search relevant.